Hey guys and welcome back. So in today's video I'm going to be filming a book review slash like books you need to read video and this video basically encapsulates like all of my current favorite books over the past like year or two I would say. I try to pick books that I have not seen on book talk, I have not seen anyone else talk about and I just wanted to kind of highlight them and just talk about why I liked them. So let's just get into the video. I have a huge stack of books right next to me. My very first one, I just pulled this off of the top of one of my stacks, is a book I actually just finished reading and it is called The Inheritance Games. So this book is by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I would say this book is probably good for like maybe like ninth grade and above, I would say. So this book, the first thing I will say about it is the cover art. I am obsessed with this cover art. Look how cute this is, guys. I think it is just so, so pretty. This book I would classify definitely as like a YA book, like the mystery genre. This book is about the main character, Avery Grahams, and she's a junior in high school. So she lives with her half-sister, Libby, and her dad is kind of absent and then her mom actually died like recently, I think, in the book. She's just kind of trying to like survive, kind of get through high school, kind of be invisible in a way. And then out of the blue, she gets summoned to a will reading of someone she's never met. And apparently she's been named in the will. So when she travels to the Hawthorne house to hear the reading of the will, she learns that she has inherited billions and billions of dollars from the late Tobias Hawthorne. And Tobias Hawthorne has basically left his kids and his grandsons with practically nothing compared to like the scope of like his enormous fortune. Basically left all his money to Avery and Avery has no idea who this guy is. But basically throughout the book, she works together with the four Hawthorne brothers to unravel the mystery and just figure out the reason behind him leaving her the fortune. And it's just a really good book. It's actually a series. So this, the first book is The Inheritance Games. The second book is The Hawthorne Legacy. And the third book is called The Final Gambit. And The Final Gambit actually comes out in August. So I have literally just been waiting for that to come out ever since I finished Hawthorne Legacy, which is the second book. But oh my gosh, this book was super well written and like very descriptive. So completely switching gears. The next book is called One Day in December by... Josie Silver. I think I talked about this in my winter favorites, but this book is so, so good. Basically, Lori meets this guy, or she sees this guy on a bus. Basically, she becomes a little, like, infatuated with him, even though she's literally seen him for, like, a millisecond. And basically, she spends the next year kind of joking with one of her friends, Sarah, basically, like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be this guy, he's gonna be the love of my life, etc., etc. And then at the holiday party, I think, yeah, at a holiday party, Sarah brings home her new boyfriend and it's Jack, the guy from the bus. The rest of the book is different perspectives, Laurie and Jack, and it's kind of like their story over the, the span of 10 years. So even though it is called One Day in December, I honestly think it's appropriate for like any time of the year because it kind of covers over a span of 10 years. I don't even know what genre this would be in. It does have some romance in it for sure, but it's a lot different than I thought um, it would be because there's just a lot of like different topics discussed in the book. There's different like hardships the characters struggle with uh, that adds like some more layers and depth to the novel. So I really liked that. One Day in December, definitely go read it. I love books that are from two different perspectives. So definitely go pick this up. So this next book is actually perfect for the upcoming season. I read it last year in May and it is called The Summer of Broken Rules. Let me tell you the second I started reading this book, I was like hooked. I was like obsessed with this book for a while. It also has super, super cute cover art like the other two. One of the other things I liked is they had pretty short chapters. Also, that's one thing I like about the Inheritance Games. It has really short chapters. I love short chapters so, so much. This book also has a one year later, which I love when there's like a little epilogue. This book is set in Martha's Vineyard and basically Meredith, she's the main character, basically her family is going on their little annual um, Martha's Vineyard trip and they stay with their families in like these little houses all around this like one area of the island and it's like their first time returning back um, 
because Meredith's sister had died in like a tragic accident so it was kind of like hard for them to come back there anyways so they returned back for a wedding and basically Meredith like meets this guy and they like immediately become like really close the main storyline is there's this game called assassin and the assassin game is basically played by like all members of the family and like cousins and friends and they're basically kind of playing this assassin game to honor claire's legacy because like she loved the game she won every year so of course meredith and um the guy i think he's one of the groomsmen they team up and they decide that they are going to win this thing so yeah i think it's a really fun like super summery read to just like tuck in your little like tote bag before you go to the beach or something like that next book is the book i like just finished reading a couple or actually no i just finished reading this about a week ago and i love this book it had been on my tbr for a while so the girl's guide to murder by holly jackson this is also a series there's a good girl's guide to murder good girl bad blood and there's one more oh my battery's flashing the main character pip she has like this senior like capstone project it's like a research project that you kind of like do on your own outside of class and pip decides for her own senior capstone project that she is going to attempt to solve a murder from five years ago this girl andy bell basically disappeared and she was like super popular and the person who was found guilty is this other guy sal who was her boyfriend actually and it appeared that he had basically committed suicide which kind of confirmed his guilt in the eyes of the town and this is like a very small town that she lives in so basically once word gets out that she's doing the project everyone's kind of like surprised because basically the scenes which is sal's family have become social pariahs and pip decides to team up with ravi who is sal's younger brother and they decide they're going to solve the case together and basically pip gets like super invested in it and there's all kinds of like different twists and i was trying to figure out like who the murderer is like what, ha what actually happened and my favorite part of this book i love the cover art as well but i'm actually obsessed with like different things like things like this and just like those different little details that really make the book unique it like actually shows like her different capstone project entries persons of interest and then there's like um a recorded interview i think this book is so good like I could have finished this in one day if I had the time. It's that good. Next books I would recommend are books by Karen M. McManus. So this is one that I recently read. It's called You'll Be the Death of Me. This one is a standalone, I believe, but she has another series called One of Us is Lying. And oh my gosh, One of Us is Lying is so good. It's told from four different perspectives. It's actually a series on Peacock right now if you guys wanted to watch that as well better though but anyways basically that book is about four no five kids are in detention and then one of them ends up dying and the person that died he was writing a gossip blog and all of the other four people in detention all had secrets that he was about to expose so they're all people of interest and basically they all try to like uncover the truth this book has a very similar vibe it's from three different perspectives and it's about Ivy, Mateo, and Cal. And they all used to be best friends. One of the days after the class council elections, all three of them meet up with each other, like coincidentally, and they all decide they're gonna ditch school and they're just gonna like go hang out just for, just for all of like a various number of reasons. And then they see this other student they know, they follow him and then they lose him. I can't really remember how. And then basically, they walk into this like art studio i think and they find one of their classmates has been murdered so they're like freaking out because obviously like if they're there it kind of seems very suspicious throughout the rest of the day their secrets are revealed i think the book is really good because it had the three different perspectives and I like the idea that they all kind of used to be friends and now they aren't anymore. I would definitely recommend this and pretty much any of her other books. The next book is a book I read quite a while ago. 
um it's called they wish they were us by jessica goodman it's again another murder mystery book and basically the book similarly to a good girl's guide to murder is basically this girl named jill she has this best friend her best friend is killed freshman year um and her boyfriend basically confesses to the murder and jill kind of tries to like move on with her life after that and then senior year the case is kind of like reopened and like secrets are revealed another element of the book is it takes place at this prep school so they're always kind of trying to like cover things up and like save face and everything like looks perfect on the outside um but in reality there are definitely some dark secrets so i think it really like speaks to like like one of the reviewers says on the back of the book the pursuit of perfection and kind of how everything isn't always as it seems this next book is a super fun summer read it's definitely a bit of like a younger read but it's still like super super fun and it's such like a comforting book like oh my gosh it's just it's so comforting the main character's mom lena dies that's how the book begins and her mom's one wish is for lena to spend the summer in italy with one of her mom's friends and basically her mom wants her to get to know her father who she's never met before so once she gets to italy she's kind of like fish out of water in a sense she's never been out of the country before and she feels like an outsider she does make friends and she finds her mom's old journal that basically talked about her own time in italy and when she went to college in italy and lena basically decides she's gonna like visit all these places that her mom had visited and there is a bit of a mystery element she's trying to uncover the truth behind her mom's um year maybe a little over a year in italy and yeah i just think it's like a really fun exciting book the very last book is american royals this is actually the sequel called majesty but i don't have um, the main one, my friend's actually borrowing it right now. But basically, the book is a bit of like a fantasy book, and it's kind of like imagining like what would life be like if like America had become a monarchy instead of um, obviously a democracy as it is right now. I feel like just like the They Wish They Were Us book, it kind of shows how deceiving appearances can be. It shows the perspective of four different people. Beatrice, who is going to be the next Queen of America. And then there's Samantha, who is Beatrice's younger, like, rebellious sister. And then um, Samantha, who goes by Sam. Um, she has a friend named Nina, who is kind of... She's kind of in the royal spotlight in a sense because of her connections to the royal family. The final perspective is Daphne who used to date Sam's brother, Sam's twin brother actually, Jeff. And she is basically intent on winning him back. So but yeah, this book has a ton of drama, a ton of like kind of twists and it's just like a very fun read and I think you guys would totally enjoy it. And yeah, that was the last book. I really hope you guys pick up one or more of these and I will see you in my next video.